Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I would like to share with you a very practical tip that might make your life easy when you work with Mediator and ASP.NET Core. And let's start by overviewing the current setup that we have that is based actually on another video that I have made recently and you'll find the link to it in the description below. Here we have for instance this create product which we have here an iRequest and the corresponding iRequest handler in which we do some very basic stuff about creating a product. Now you see that the request handler is actually very clean and this is because we have created also two different behaviors. Like we have this create product validation behavior which is a mediator pipeline behavior that does the iRequest validation and it throws if something is not okay in the specific iRequest. But then we also have this logging behavior in which we just do some logging before and after the handler gets executed. And now the challenge comes that in some situations you might want to share some context, some information between the different mediator types that play together to handle a specific request. Like in our case, we might want to share some information between the handler, which is here, between the create product validation behavior and between the logging behavior. And to take this as a very practical example, let's assume that we want to create a system where we want to create custom identifiers for each request processing. So let's add here a new class first and we'll call this class mediator context. And you can think about this idea as like you have in an ASP.NET Core request, you have the HTTP context in which you have a lot of contextual information about the incoming request. Now conceptually, we want to achieve kind of like the very same idea to have some contextual information regarding the entire mediator processing pipeline and what we do at every stage, because it might come in handy to get some of that information from the mediator context. Now, by default, Mediator doesn't have this concept of the Mediator context. So the easiest way to recreate this is actually by using or by implementing basically a dictionary of a string and an object. Therefore, we'll make our Mediator context class inherit the dictionary from string and object. And I know it sounds too easy to be true, but that's actually it for that class. We don't need anything else. The other thing that we need is obviously to add this to our DI container with builder services add scope mediator context so that we make sure that for each incoming request we get only one mediator context. Now let's go and implement our request identifier. And for this I will start here in this logging behavior because this logging behavior is actually the first one that will wrap each handler. And what we want to do here is obviously inject this mediator context. So we'll also get it in the constructor and do the assignments to the field. And now comes the interesting part because we have this context, we can create here a new trace identifier with GUID new GUID and we can use this dictionary to set the key request identifier and set this specific GUID as a value. Now maybe we can change our logger here to also contain the information about this request identifier that we have just created. And it would probably look something like this. And we can obviously enhance also the second logging. And if in this behavior we actually set this value or add this key and the value to the dictionary, if we go to the create product validator, we can also inject our mediator context here, also in the constructor, and also do the assignment in the constructor. Now let's just rewrite a little bit what we have here to also include the trace identifier. So what we do here is we say that var trace identifier and we want to cast it to a GUID because we know we have created as GUID and we just access the mediator context and the request identifier and then we define this message and in the logger if we have an error we include our trace identifier and the message that the product price must be positive and we also need to use this message when we throw the exception. And now we are basically good to go. Now, before I wrap up, I want to say that I did take this example with the trace identifier because I think conceptually it's easier to understand how this type of sharing context information for mediator might be useful in your application. But if you want to implement real distributed tracing or tracing, there are a lot of different tools that you can use also built in ASP.NET Core, but also there are third party providers that, pro that, that provide services and tools for observability. So you might not want to reinvent the wheel. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel if you're for the first time here. And if you have any comment or if you have any question, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave me a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.